today we'll take a look at this psalm, Psalm 114. Psalm 114. As we go through this psalm, Psalm 114, we'll see that uh, this psalm is quite familiar uh, to us in the sense that, that we know the history of Israel and where they have come from and where they, where they went and the problems and troubles that they went through. Uh, what we're going to do with this particular psalm is, is take a look at it from that point of view and then we want to apply it to our, to our lives. So Psalm 1, 114. When Israel went out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of strange language. Judah was his sanctuary, and Israel his dominion. The sea saw it and fled. Jordan was driven back. The mountains skipped like rams, and the little hills like lambs. <coughs> what ailed thee, O thou sea, that thou fleddest? Thou Jordan, that thou was driven back. Ye mountains, that ye skip like rams, and ye little hills like lambs. Tremble, thou earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, which turned the rock into a standing water, the flint into a fountain of water. This song here speaks highly about God, but also the people who God led, which was Israel at the time. The background of this, the deliverance of Israel out of Egypt gave birth their church and nation. In this psalm, it is celebrated in lively strains of praise. It was fitly, therefore, made as a part of the great hallelujah, or song of praise, which the Jews were wont to, to sing at the close of the Passover supper. So as we read this particular psalm, as we read it, we see all the, the things that God has done for Israel. How the sea opened up, how the Jordan opened up, the river Jordan, and how it meant, it meant hills and mountains were able to quake and, and then uh, how it meant a rock, how water would even come out of a rock yeah. at the command of God, the mighty works of the Lord. So yes, this right here was a song of praise, but yet it demonstrated God's power with the people of God of Israel. So yes, the Jews must, must never forget what God had done for them. Number one, that they were brought out of slavery. You know, Israel went into slavery, basically went into Egypt and, and ended up in slavery. It kind of makes you wonder, was this God's plan? Was this his purpose for Israel? Don't you know, whenever we have stuff just, just, just uh, uh, without, having, without having to go through any trials or, or tribulations, we, we would have a tendency of not appreciating, amen, what God has done for us. Oh, uh, yeah. Even in church, I recall, amen, everything was just going nice and, and smooth over there in the book of Acts. Everything, all the people were joining the church, amen. Three thousand up to five thousand people joining the church. Things just rolling, just like it's supposed to, as they thought. Yeah. As sometimes we think. Yeah. As people would roll in and, and join and everything else, just like the Bible says, wow. God had a way of making the people do what they were supposed to do, the church. Yes, the church was there. Yes, the church was teaching, but the church was not doing what God had commanded them to do. God commanded them to go out. Yeah. But they stayed right there at home. 
So God had a man by the name of Saul come along. And he came and began to make the church quite uncomfortable. And he got them up from that sitting down. Amen. He chased them out of the building. Amen. And then they went on out. And when they went out, they had to tell people, amen, what they knew. And what they knew, amen, was the gospel of Jesus Christ. And as they told people, everywhere they went, people were saved. They were doing what they were supposed to do, even though they were pushed to do it. Sometimes we may need a push to do what God would have us to do. I recall hearing, amen, one sermon where uh, the minister was saying that he was stuck in a in a mud puddle, in the mud or in his car. See, he had a two-wheel drive. And the car and the wheel just kept on spinning. And then he said a fella came on up and, and looked at him and, and he had a four by four. He took a chain, hooked it on up to his car, and then, uh, then the minister said, he said, no, don't pull it from the front. Not only will you just mess up probably something, but I want you to do is come behind and push me. <laughs> He said, what happens is that when you come back and push me, yeah. then I have the steam and I'm able to go. Uh, and that was interesting as, as I heard that, where, how, wherever I heard that sermon from. But So he got behind him and, and just pushed him a little bit. And when he pushed him a little bit, as he was already spinning, he, he hit some, some, uh, some uh, good dirt and then he went on. Every now and then, you know, sometimes it's like when you were just spinning all in one place. Like we just... Just, just marking time, so to speak, and, yeah. and, and treading water. And, yeah. and what we need is, 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 you know, we always look for somebody just to pull us along uh, the way. You know how it is. But, but every now and then, and then even a leader needs a what? A little bit of push. Man. 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 So we find ourselves just spinning in one place. Like, like even Israel was spinning in one place. They needed a, a push. Because even Israel, while they were in Egypt, they, they, they really enjoyed them and their onions and their cucumbers and, and all that, 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 that good old stuff that they planted. Right. And they, they grew. <laughs> and they wanted to go back mm. after God had brought them out. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Push. So yeah, Israel was brought out of slavery. In Israel, they, the Jews were not to forget what God had done for them. They're also that God set up his tabernacle among them. God said that they were his people. And because they were his people, he had a tabernacle and he, and, and, and he lived among them. His presence was among them. So that was special. They, they should have felt special. They, they should have felt as though that because God is who he is, that they had nothing to worry about. And God tells us that we too are his people. And he tells us to give him amen praise. He says, show forth praise. Amen. We all say amen me. For God to see the Jesus inside of us. Yeah. Wherever we go, they should see the Jesus inside, inside of us. Yeah. And if they don't see Jesus inside of us, it's kind of like a sad commentary because it, make, it makes anybody wonder, then what are they seeing? Right. Yeah. Are we looking too much like the world? Yeah. Now, I heard, amen, of, of, of those with, with some people and, and they were talking, beginning to talk about church. I, I would invite them and, and then uh, they were talking about their church and they heard and they talked about different ones and their nephews and different ones about going to church and they said that, you know, they don't want to go to these churches where, you, you know, they, 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 uh, they, you know, they dress up, so to speak. I got to say that because, amen, uh, too often, amen, we're, we're dressing down, so to speak. Huh? Y'all follow me? Yeah. What happens is that there's a lot of places where you just come as you are. Mm -hmm. Ain't nothing wrong with coming as you are. Once you get to understanding what the place where you come is not a Amen. Once you get to understanding that the place where you come in is a place of God. Amen. Once you get once you get to understanding where the place you come in is a place of prayer. Yes. What happened if, amen, amen, you come in, amen, to 
the house of God and you come and as you are. Amen. And if you're sagging in God, amen, the Holy Spirit gets a hold of you. Amen. The Holy Ghost tells you to go down to the altar, amen, and get on your knees. Amen. Then we'll come. Yeah, you're going to be prostrate. My Lord, my Lord. Amen. But it happens that the Holy Ghost, amen, get a hold of you, amen, and you're wearing something that, that amen, you're, you, 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 you're just wearing something that you ought not be wearing. That you don't mind flaunting, amen, in the club, but when you come to church, amen, yeah. uh, you don't want to, but yet you want to wear it. Amen. Oh, Lord. Amen. God told Israel that he dwells among them because they are his people. God says that we are his people. Yeah. We ought to act like it. Amen. He said, if God, amen, dwells among his people. Yes. He tells us, amen, over there, I mean, in Corinthians, he says, Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? Amen. He says, Don't you know? So, since we know that, then, then we ought to be treating our bodies the, the right way. So he can continue to tabernacle, amen, among us and, and in us. So the Jews are not, must never forget what God has done for them. That the Red Sea and the Jordan River were divided before them. That as Moses was just simply told, to, amen, to raise up his staff, amen, and then the, the Red Sea. Split open, divided, big enough, amen, for chariots to go through, and all the Jews, but yet on dry ground. That's God. The Jews were never to forget about what God had done for them. For the Jordan River to open up also, and for them to cross over to the promised land on dry ground. By the priest carrying, amen, the ark, amen, of the covenant, and they just step in the brim of the river, yeah. and the river divides. That's God, that's God, yeah. that's God, yeah. that's God. The Jews are never to forget what God had done for them. That the earth shook at the giving of the law when God came down on Mount Sinai. And the people were fearful. That's God. Yeah. But that's the testimony of the Jews in the Bible, of Israel. Yeah. What's your testimony? What's, what's my testimony? Yes, I can brag about God, amen, 20 years ago. Uh -huh. But what has he done for you lately? Now that I ask what has God done for you lately, what <laughs> have you, have I done for him Man. lately? Man. Because Sunday school this morning was about love, I gotta add this. Love, deacons, have everything to do with it. <laughs> So yeah, the Jews were not to forget about all the things that God had done for them. Look, we are not to forget about what God has done for us. Amen. He brought us, amen, out of the, what is that? Thank you. Muddy and miry place. Yes, he did. Amen. He, he put our foot on solid ground. Y'all help me now. All right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Absolutely. And that's what God has done for us. So yeah, just as Israel was ready to come out of slavery, God made a way. God made a way for them because, amen, there are two points I'd like to just share with us uh, today. These two points are this. Number one, make sure you are God's sanctuary. Make sure you are God's sanctuary. We've covered already what, amen, Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter number 6, verse 19, amen, said, and I'm just going to read that for our hearing. 
1 Corinthians 6, 19 says what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, yeah. which is in you, which ye have of God, and you are not your own. You are not your own. I'm going to just add 20 here. It says, for ye are bought with a price. Jesus Christ died for every one of us. Amen. You are bought with a price. Slaves were bought with price. You are bought with a price. Jesus paid what? His life, his blood. He paid it all. That means that we ain't got no excuses at all. Because every one of our, our excuses, amen, were hung on the cross, were nailed amen. to the cross. You are bought with the price. We can't repay him. No. We owe him what? Too much. Oh, man. Therefore, glorify God in your body. Not only in your body, but also in your spirit. Because your body and your spirit belongs to God. Amen. Amen. We owe him too much. Amen. So we got to make sure we are, we are God's sanctuary. The Bible says, amen, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And then once we are in Christ, we are a new creature. We are a new creation. Amen. Amen. We are a new man in Christ now, a new person in Christ. So we need to, amen, do the things, amen, that are right before his eyes because the old man has been put away. Has been buried, amen, with him. And as, amen, we're buried with him, we are now to walk in the newness of life. But yes, then make sure that, that you are God's sanctuary. Amen. Even as the song goes out, amen, I'll be a living I thought it was sanctuary. sanctuary. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right? I'm kidding. Yeah. Amen. Uh, for you. Yeah, there you go. Amen. But yes, but we are to be, amen, God's Sanctuary. God, amen, to live inside of us. Amen. amen. Aren't you, amen, glad that God lives inside of you? Amen. The Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. And we have talked about in Bible study, amen, and uh, our periodic and throughout the all, Indian, all teachings that the greater that is in us still needs to be fed. Amen. He cannot, amen, remain great if we don't feed him. Amen. He can't continue to be strong if we don't feed him. Amen, amen. And also, amen, make note that if we don't feed him, we can be charged, amen, with what's that? Uh, neglect uh, or uh, uh, because you're starving him of malnutrition, you know, charged of that. We're, 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 we're guilty of that. So we've got to feed him. Amen. He needs to be fed. The Holy Ghost needs to be fed the Word of God. Amen. If we are to, amen, have it, then that, that, the power that we need to be able to go out to this world to tell, amen, somebody about Jesus. Amen. So, yes, we, we need to make sure that we are God's, amen, sanctuary. Amen. Secondly and lastly, that we need to call upon His name. I know, amen, Israel called upon his name because God answered them. He said he heard their cries. Mm -hmm. Amen. Don't you ever cry to the Lord and just call out to him mm -hmm. Amen. all throughout the night or even throughout mm -hmm. the day or whenever mm -hmm. just calling upon his name. Amen. Just saying Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. Jesus. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Amen. Lord help me. Amen. Thank you Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Just constantly. Amen. Talking to him. So, so we need to call upon his name and we can call upon his name when we know. Amen. We belong to him. Amen. amen. I want to take a look right here, amen, at Psalm, 60, uh, Psalm 116. This is just two Psalms over from 114. And, 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 and uh, deacons, take a look at this. Verses 1 and 2, take a listen in, and let me know how, uh, what this sounds like. I know the Lord. 
He heard my cry. Uh -huh. And what? He did. Mothers? Every grandma. Every grandma. Uh -huh. What? As long as I what? As long as I live. We throw around. I hasten to his throne. Hey, Amen. Look at 116 right here. Look. He said what? I love the Lord. Huh? Because what? He had heard. It's a song of praise. 
It may not be, amen, like Psalm 100 or Psalm, amen, of others in which we have there, but, but here, amen, it lets us know, amen, when God has done something, amen, yeah. for us, yeah. we are to praise Him, yeah. and as we praise Him, hallelujah, amen, He will, amen, send, amen, to our every, amen, every need. Yeah. Hallelujah, praise the Lord, everybody. Yeah. 